What's up everyone? It's Chris with Bottle Cat Barbecue. Well, I still have leftover stuffing. So what we're going to do today is stuffing stuffed pork chops. Let's go. All right, I got two pork chops here. They're about an inch and a half thick. I haven't done anything to them, haven't done any trimming. I'm just going to get some of the excess um, stuff off the edge just to make them uniform. That's also just because the, the way my brain works. When you do this, what you want to look for is kind of even pieces, um, about the same size, that way they cook evenly. And all we're going to do is get a nice sharp knife and kind of see how far in the knife goes, just so you keep yourself safe. Because what we're doing is we're, we're cutting a pocket into this thing. So we're going to be going in, kind of rounding out to one side, then rounding out to the other side. Try and feeling for the tip on the inside, just get a nice big cavity in there. So, get in the middle, go in. Just be careful, guys. Work slow, work smart. And when you go back in, if you kind of just work up and down like that, it'll, it'll follow the same path. And all we're doing is we're just building a cavity so we can get the stuffing in there. And just roll back and forth. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. And go down as much as you can. What you don't want to do is you, you don't want to create another hole somewhere. So just be careful of that. And I wouldn't suggest trying to go up or down because you could just come out the surface. Just go side to side. That's done. Now for the stuffing. And again, you do want to use leftover stuffing because the inside, especially with pork, the inside of the, of the pork is not going to be the template that you would need to cook stuffing, especially protein stuffing. So you want to use leftover stuffing with this. Pork is best at about 145. And if you're just doing a cornbread stuffing, that'd be fine. But if you're doing a sausage stuffing, usually that needs to be about 155 or 160 in order to be cooked all the way. The best way I've found of doing this is just getting small quantities and just kind of putting it there at, at the opening and pushing it. Don't try taking your finger and kind of stuffing all the way down in. That's not going to work. You're basically just going to wrap it around your finger and it's going to pull out. But if you just do small amounts at a time, as you push it in, that amount will, will push, its, push its way down inside, forcing the rest of it down. You don't want to go too overboard because you could, as it's cooking, create air pockets and it might either force its way back out, which we're going to do something about that, but, or it could maybe find a different way in or way out through another side if you got too close to the edge or something. That's probably about good. So what I'm gonna do is just see how it's kind of, kind of rounded out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of push it flat. That, that help evenly dis disperse it. So it gets back to being flat. And yeah, and it's not coming out the edge. Can't clean up a little bit and move on to the next one. All right. Now, when you're cooking this, like I said, you, you're going to, there's going to be some pressure and you're going to get some of this kind of seeping out this entrance. We have a trick for that. And that trick is bacon. That's right. Magical bacon. <laughs> All you got to do is you got to wrap a piece of bacon around the edge. Tie it with some, some butcher's twine, and I'll keep the stuffing from seeping out. So how you do that is basically that. Get your strip of bacon, put it over the hole, and then wrap it around. The bacon will hold itself for the most part. Then all you gotta do is take some twine, get it centered, and just tie it on. 
All right. Cut that off. And there we go. I'll hold it. I'll hold on there good enough. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get some rub on these things. Today I am using the original shake from Uncle Steve's Shake. I got this through a giveaway from the Cooking with CJ channel. He has a hot seat every week and he had a giveaway and I was lucky enough to win it. So, so Uncle Steve and CJ, thank you very much for this. Not going to use a binder. I don't think it's needed. But I'm going to get this all over these pork chops. I will leave a link up above and down in the description to, to both Uncle Steve and to CJ. Please go check them out. I know Uncle Steve's Shake has been on the market for a few years, but it's just recently started being promoted uh, um, across YouTube. A lot of people have been using it, been getting some gr great reviews. So I'm excited to use this stuff. So CJ, thank you. Uncle Steve, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna let these sit in the fridge, um, let it kind of just sweat in while I get the pit out. And today we're using our pit barrel cooker. All right, pit temperature is about 260. That's what I'm wanting for this pork. Good smoke rolling. These things have been sitting for about Eh, about an hour or so. Okay, get these things on. I'm not going to probe them just because I don't, don't want to risk getting into where the uh, stuffing is. But I'm going to let these things go for about 45 minutes. Then we'll see where we're at. just came in looking great see the juices coming up out of that bacon's nice and tender crisp all the juices nice pork if you want to do like a barbecue glaze or something go for it I just didn't want to I'm gonna keep this as pure as possible you can see on this one if that bacon wasn't there that stuffing would have come right out coming out right there so all right let's go in these things cut open make that twine okay all right let's cut into this look at that see that all the juices are going in there. That right there is why I wasn't worried about putting a glaze on it. I knew it was going to be juicy on the inside. All right, let's get a taste test. This is moist and tender as can be. Mmm. Good rub. All right, let's get a piece with the some of the stuffing. Let's see, actually, let's just try the stuffing. Mmm. So you got the base cornbread stuffing plus the juices from the pork. Man, that's good. I love this because it's an entree and a side, all in one. So, if you're doing this for a big party say Thanksgiving, um, you save room on the plate because you have two things all at once. Let me get a big piece of the edge just so I can really taste the Uncle Steve shake. Hmm. It's a great 
It's a great bite, great, great flavor, great flavor. It's kind of just that, that down home barbecue flavor, but it's a little something extra. I can't place it. Man, it's really good. So the pieces that, that are right next to the, the stuffing, and when you get some stuffing with it, you get that sweet taste of the stuffing with the cornbread. It just reminds you of that meal all over again, but which is just a new spin onto it. So guys, this is a great idea. Let me know if you like this video. Please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. CJ, thank you very much for the giveaway. Uncle Steve Shake, you're rocking it, man. Great stuff. Again, I'll leave a link to their channels up above and down below if you want to check them out. So what do you all like doing with your leftovers? Whether it's stuffing, turkey, or whatever. Let me know down below what your favorite leftover is, and I might do my own spin on today. All right, all, I'm going to get me and the kid fed with the rest of this. I'm going to see you guys next time. And hey, it's like I always say, no matter what you got, no matter how you're going to do it, just cook it. See you guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.